In this video, we're going to be debunking a girl who left the Catholic faith and gave her reasons for doing so. And I'm going to say right at the outset that this was one of the hardest videos that I've ever had to do. First, because, well, <laughs> there were just so many errors from beginning to end, I could have made a four hour video and just choosing what to talk about was difficult. Second, because she was so nice and sincere and she's a seeker. I mean, she is seeking some sort of truth, but she's so confused and she's so misled and she doesn't understand her faith. And this is one of the reasons I chose her is because she's representative of a majority, maybe, of the people in this country who have left the Catholic Church, not for necessarily logical reasons, but for emotional reasons, or because they didn't understand their faith, or because they fell into a life of sin and then just fell away from God and the rest just seem made up. But a lot of times people have good questions and they don't get their questions answered. And Danny, if you ever want your questions answered, I'd be happy to talk to you in person, over the phone, over Zoom, however you want it. You can ask me any question you want. We can talk about them one by one and I will give you good answers because wait, I agree with you, Danny. Many people don't give us good answers and there is a lot of contradiction out there, but spent my life looking up all the answers and I can help you if you want it. And then the third reason it was so hard is because there were so many shocking statements, so many things that I was like, ah. What I know about Jesus when he was on earth is that he is kind and loving and that he doesn't give a shit about most things. Like so far off base, I'm like, Whoa. I don't think she's logically thought through the conclusions of some of the things she's thinking. And I understand she's on a journey. And I've already started praying for Danny to come home uh, back to the Catholic Church. But, you know, that's quite shocking. And there's many other things that are just so off base that we need to address them. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to Catholic Truth, your place where anyone at any time from anywhere can come to know exactly what the Catholic Church teaches and why and how it can change your life. We're a nonprofit apologetics organization that wants to help you to know, love, and live your faith and fall in love with Jesus and be transformed by him. If you haven't yet, please follow us on our social media pages below. And if you haven't yet, bring us to your church to do a retreat, a confirmation retreat, a parish mission, uh, apologetic seminars, whatever you want. We are here. Check out our website, info at thecatholictruth.org. We've just booked uh, retreats in Connecticut and New Jersey, uh, New Hampshire, Mississippi, and different places around the country. We just got a call from Maryland. So check us out, info at thecatholictruth.org. I want to be a gay, loving, open-hearted person who doesn't use the Bible against people. And I don't want to be one of those people who says, love the sinner, hate the sin, and God still loves you even though you're actually low-key a horrible person. I will never be that, and I don't want to be that. And so it's really, really tough when all that kind of the Christian community is represented by online is traditional Christians. And I am seen by most Christians as a heretic, her heretic, heretic, heretic heretic as wrong as an idiot like i got so many mean comments on my video basically saying she has no idea what she's talking about this is all wrong like basically calling me dumb for not thinking that being gay is wrong for not thinking that you have to wait till marriage for not thinking that god cares whether you curse or whether you don't go to church every week like there's so many things that i believe just in my heart and from what i believe that i know about jesus from the bible and people disagree with me because of bible verses so it's really 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 hard when you want to believe in a creator and you do believe in a creator and you think that he's kind and loving and he's just, just based on my perception of the Bible, like from what I've read, not the verses in Leviticus, not the stuff that people throw at me on a daily basis, but from what I've read about Jesus on earth and who he was on earth, not about the Old Testament God or what people who like represented God did. What I know about Jesus when he was on earth is that he is kind and loving and that he doesn't give a shit about most things. Jesus doesn't give up about what you believe. I mean, this one sentence alone could merit a half an hour video, but the reality is it all comes down to her personal opinion about what she thinks. In a sense, it doesn't even seem like she knows the real Jesus. It seems like she's taken snapshots out of the Bible of things she likes, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yes, Jesus is loving to sinners, you know, but he also brought sinners to himself. And he also told them to go never sin again. And he also told them to cut off their life of sin. And he also told them to get rid of their sin. So he didn't just love them and let them do whatever they want and they can go to heaven. No, he loved them because he wanted to save their souls and he wanted to change their lives. So these people who are just saying, oh, Jesus just loved everyone. Jesus just loved. That's all we got to do. As long as we have faith and we just love, you can do whatever you want. But that is not what the Bible says. You're literally taking like a snapshot 
of this. This is all you're seeing of me, my eyes. And that's all you're taking of the Bible is one little part. But Jesus said so much else that you're either not looking at, don't know exist, or just forgot about. I mean, Jesus himself says in Matthew 7 that there are only two roads. One leads to heaven and the other leads to hell. Jesus said that the road to heaven is narrow. It goes uphill. It's hard to find and very few find it. Where he says that the road to destruction and hell is wide. Many people travel it and it's easy because it's paved and it goes downhill and all that sort of thing. And I'm adding to that a little bit, but the bottom line is he says the road to heaven is hard and few find it. Whereas the road to hell is easy. It's easy to take. You can do whatever you want. Just be a good person. Just, you know, live life, have fun, be what, don't worry about following God too much. Just believe. I mean, that's the kind of the attitude she has. And that's the attitude that Jesus expresses that people go to hell for. And it's scary. I, I, I bring this up and I'm doing this video because so many people are on the wrong path and they don't know it. And I want to warn them just like Jesus. I want to warn them and I want to help them and I want to love them back onto the right path. In fact, it's not about just doing whatever we want and Jesus doesn't give up mm, about what we do. In fact, Jesus said in John 14, 15, that if you love me, you will follow my commandments. He who does not love me does not and does not follow my commandments has no fellowship with me, he says. We have to follow his commandments. And in fact, Matthew 19, 16, 17, and 18, a man comes up to Jesus and says, what do I have to do, Lord Jesus, to get to heaven? And Jesus says, oh, just do whatever you want. You know, just have faith in God. No, he didn't say that. He said, follow the commandments. And the man said, well, which commandments? And Jesus said, you know, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. Honor your father and mother. And he listed the commandments we need to follow to get to heaven. And the man said, oh, that's good. I followed all of these since my childhood. And Jesus said, there's still one more thing you lack in order to go to heaven. And the man said, what is that? And he said, go sell everything you own. If it's an idol in our life and we treat it as more important than God, it's going to prevent us from getting into heaven. There are so many things, sin, commandments, money, idols that prevent us from getting to heaven. And that's why Jesus came to call us from our sins. That's why he ate with sinners. She said, oh, Jesus ate with the sinners. Jesus ate with the prostitutes and the sexual people. He didn't judge them. He didn't quote the Bible at them. He just loved them. Yes, he did love them, but he loved them so much he called them from their sins. And in fact, when the Pharisees called him out on this, why are you eating with sinners and tax collectors and gross people like that? He said, people who are healthy do not need a doctor. I have come that they might find life. And so he's saying that these people, these prostitutes, these tax collectors, they're sick. They're sick with sin. They're on the wrong road. They're on the wrong path. I have come to give them new life. In fact, like the lady who was known to be a big sinner, Jesus didn't tell her, oh, it's okay, just believe in God. She washed his feet with her hair. She scrubbed it. She cried for her sins. And Jesus said, your many sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. The Bible teaches that sin keeps us from heaven. And Jesus came to earth to die for us so he could remove that sin, remove the problem of sin, and so we could go to heaven. But if we just said, oh, Jesus doesn't really care what, you know, you do as long as you, you're semi a good person, as long as you have faith and you believe in God, you know, Jesus doesn't give a, you know, <sighs> yes, he does. Yes, he does, because sin specifically keeps us from God. The Bible says that the wages of sin, the penalty for sin, is death and hell. But Jesus came to die for us. Yes, we were supposed to die because of our sins. But guess what? Jesus loved us so much that he came to die in our place. But he did not come to die so we could remain in our sins and do whatever we feel like and whatever we personally think is right. And because he said that is the road that leads to hell. He said that. So I really feel like, and I hate to say this because it sounds bad, but Danny's in a sense made herself God. I believe this. I feel this. I think in my heart this. I personally, I, 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 it's all about me and not what Jesus has actually taught us. Not what the Bible actually says. And as we're going to see, and as she has said, that the Bible contradicts most of the things that she believes. So how can she claim to follow Jesus in, in the Bible if she doesn't even follow the Bible and the teachings of Jesus? That's the problem in our country is we replace Jesus and the Bible with ourselves. That's called idolatry. It breaks the first commandment. 
And that one's a big no-no. But let's see what else she has to say. I'm very supportive of the LGBT community. I'm very pro-contraception. I'm pro-choice. I have a lot of beliefs that some outspoken, hardcore Christians disagree with. And the Bible even disagrees with. And I sometimes have a really, really, really hard time with my religion and my belief system because of that. But for example, I made a video, like I said a while ago, about all my beliefs and kind of how I feel about the church and my alternative set of beliefs that I don't think that God really cares about your sexuality. I don't think God really cares about what you do with your life on these little minuscule, in these little minuscule details. I think that if you believe in him and you love him, you go to heaven and that's that. In this part, she says that she's liberal, she's pro-gay, pro-abortion, pro-contraception, pro-sex before marriage, and other things that she gets into later in the video. And she goes on to say that God doesn't really care uh, really what you do in the details of your life. He just wants you to live your life, and as long as you believe in him, you're going to go to heaven. And I also thought it was very interesting that she admitted that everything she believes, or most of the things she believes, contradicts the Catholic faith and all of Christian, most of Christianity, and even the Bible. She said it contradicts the Bible, and this is why she had to walk away. But this is a huge problem. I mean, if your beliefs contradict the Bible and the Church and 2,000 years of Christianity— are you right? Are you sure that you're on the right path just because you feel it this way? This is a huge issue in our country. It's called emotional Christianity. Or uh, there's a book out there. It's called Christian Atheists. That's the name of the book. And it's people who believe in God, so they say, but they live like atheists. They believe in God, but they don't live like they believe in God. They live like the atheists. They act like the atheists. They talk and swear and curse like the atheists. They sleep around and, you know, do all this stuff just like the atheists, but they say they believe in God. So what's the difference between an atheist and a believer in that case? And this book is a really good book called Christian Atheists. So we really need to match, you know, how we walk with what we're saying and match it with our talk. And I would ask Danny and anyone else who's watching this who thinks this way, I would ask them, what is your authority on this? How do you know this? What authority do you have? I mean, where did you learn it? Where can you find it in the Bible? Where did you hear God or Jesus ever teach this? Because it's not in the Bible. None of this is in the Bible that you can basically just believe whatever you want and be a good person. That's not there. It's never been there. And in fact, that's a false teaching that's condemned in the Bible and even by Jesus himself, who said there's only one way to heaven and it's a narrow gate. Really, this might be hard to hear, but all of this is a complete justification for your own lifestyle that you want to live, for your own beliefs that you want to live. And it's not really what the Bible teaches. It's not what God teaches. It's not what even what Jesus teaches, but it's a justification for your own beliefs and lifestyle that you want to live that's not of God. And I watched another one of Danny's videos where she did fall away for a long time and she got on a bad path of sin for a couple of years and she lived it up and partied like there was no tomorrow and she fell away from God. She said she didn't become a nice person. She totally changed. She wasn't happy with herself and she wasn't happy with life at all. And I'm glad she came to that realization. Like I said, she's on a journey and I hope she comes to more realizations and I hope she comes back even more. But the bottom line is when you fall away from God, the issue is sin. You live a life of sin. And Jesus said, sin keeps you from heaven. Sin keeps you from God. It actually, Matthew 5, 8, Jesus said that the pure of heart shall see God. So the more sin has a reign on our soul, the more we're not going to see God or see the truth and we're going to start becoming God ourselves. And that's what we do when we break the first commandment and become God. Well, you know, I know the church teaches this, but I personally think this. Or I know the church teaches that, but I think the church is wrong. I think the church should, you know, teach this. So it's really a complete self, almost narcissistic way of just, I'm making everything up. Instead of letting the Bible and the church and Jesus change us, we're trying to change the church and the Bible and Jesus. And when we fall away, and we feel dirty, or when we get into sin, and she admits that in one of her encounters with a guy, she freely admits that it messed with her psychologically, and she kind of fell away after then. I've kind of, and this is my own thought, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I saw a falling away in all other parts of her life as well, and she said she fell away from religion right after that point, and Danny, maybe that's something that you want to think about. That thing messed you up, and maybe that's the part that needs to be fixed, but you can come back. You can repent. God can free you of all your sins, make you clean as the, the driven snow, and just make you completely free, and uh, that's what I want for you, but 
if you've lived a past life of sin, you have to repent of that sin for it to go away. And you have to repent of that sin to go to heaven. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 that if you don't repent from your sin, you will perish. She goes on to say that God doesn't care about all these nitty gritties. He doesn't care what you do with your sexuality and that she's pro-gay and pro all this. And, you know, she thinks that, you know, we should just love gay people. And I agree we should love gay people. We should love everyone, even though they're not gay people. They're just people, Danny, who happen to have a homosexual orientation. Don't reduce them to their sexuality because there's so much more than that. But we should love everybody. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. But Jesus loved everyone more than anybody else on earth. And he still called people out of their sins. He still hated sin. He still told us that we need to get rid of sin in our life. And the greatest love we can do is to get them to heaven and get out of their sins. Listen to what the Bible says on this. I mean, this is literally the opposite of, you know, what she's saying here. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says that, Don't you know that idolaters, murderers, homosexuals, fornicators, which is sex before marriage, which she says God doesn't care about, will not enter the kingdom of heaven without repenting? That's serious. I mean, there are so many sins. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says and 3, 16 through 17. It says, flee from sexual immorality. In other words, pornography, sex before marriage, all that stuff that God condemns. Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, i.e. through sin, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy and whose temple you are. Whoa, this is one of the harshest parts in the Bible where it says that we are the temples of God. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, meaning God is in us. And the Bible specifically says that if we destroy this temple, especially through sin and especially through sexual immorality, then God is going to destroy us and we won't go to heaven. We're going to go to hell. Those are scary words. Those should scare us. And in fact, it says in Galatians 5, 17 through 22, that the works of the flesh are the opposite of the works of the spirit. The flesh leads to hell and the spirit leads to heaven. And it says that idolatry, uncleanliness, fornication, adultery, jealousy, uh, heresies, heresies, envy, drunkenness, and different things like that are going to lead you to hell. It says, I said this beforehand, and I tell you again that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is so important, and I can't stress it enough. We can't do whatever we want to do. And Jesus does care. Jesus cares. And it says throughout the Bible that Jesus cares. This isn't the Old Testament God versus the New Testament God. The, Jesus is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all one God. So the Old Testament God is still Jesus. Three different persons in one God, but still Jesus. Jesus cares. Now listen, it says drunkenness will keep you from heaven because it kills you, which is the fifth commandment, murdering. Drunkenness is on the same par as murder in the Bible. Heresy. And she says, I'm full of heresy. She admits that, which I I respect for you. You know, you admit that. Um, but she says that she has heresies and she's full of heresies because she disagrees with a lot of things that Christianity teaches. But the Bible says that heresy leads to hell. I mean, please consider this. Fornication, sex before marriage, adultery. And Jesus said earlier, lust is adultery. And all of these things prevent us from going to heaven. So not only does Jesus not care what you do, he does. But some of the things people might consider trivial, like envy or drunkenness or just self-ambition or anger, these are things that are going to keep us from heaven. So I understand that she wants a God who's going to be nice. And I, you know, okay, she wants a God that's going to be loving. She wants a God that's going to love gay people and isn't just going to slam the Bible against them. You know what? We can tell people the truth and we can love people without actually thinking that they're scum, as you say, Danny. Just because we say we love the sinner and hate the sin, many of us actually believe that. We do hate the sin, just as God does, but we still love the sinner. My uncle is a drunk, and when he was, you know, at different parties and stuff, he ruined it for people. And one, day, one year he ruined most of Thanksgiving because he started a fist fight, and he was a terrible person when he got drunk. And another one of my uncles is in jail for life because he got drunk, and they're I love my uncle so much, but we hate the alcohol. We hate the sin. We hate the things that it makes them do because it, it makes them something that they're not. That's not who they are. They're actually really, really nice, loving people. But once alcohol gets in them, or in a sense, once sin gets in us, it's not who we're meant to be. And we do things that are against God, even though we 
are good. So it doesn't matter, Danny, what you think personally. No offense. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what God thinks. And we have to stop making ourselves God and pretending that what we think matters when God already gave us what to think and he told us how to think and he sent Jesus into the world to teach us how to think. And that's why the Bible teaches us what God's word is. And that's why the Bible is a great authority and one of the highest authorities in the Christian life. And so if you disagree with the Bible, or you only take certain parts of the Bible that fits you, then how are you going to do that? Parents discipline their children, but they still love their children. I'm a parent and I love my daughter, but I have to discipline her because I love her. And I don't want her to grow up and become bad or, you know, break laws, end up in jail. So I'm going to discipline her, but I still love her. So just because I call out the things she does wrong doesn't mean I don't love her. And just because we call out sin doesn't mean we have to be unloving about it. And I know many people are probably super rude to you online and many people are complete jerks and are not of Jesus Christ in the way they act and talk to others. But many of us are and actually do follow Jesus in the way we talk and in the way we walk. I think that God sees our intentions and no matter what, as long as we follow those intentions truly to what we honestly, truly, deeply believe is right, then we're going to be fine. Wow, this is so dangerous. I mean, if we followed this logic to its end, I mean, as long as people are sincere, just believe what they truly feel in their hearts is true, then, you know, you're going to go to heaven, she says. But this is false. She basically said, live and let live. That's at least what I got of it. Maybe, you know, I'm hearing it wrong, but you can let me know what you think. But she said, as long as we believe in our hearts, God exists and, you know, we're sincere, it doesn't really matter what you do. I mean, many people were sincere in what they believed. Hitler was sincere in what he believed. Mao and Stalin and Pol Pot, who wiped out a fifth of his country's population, he was really sincere that he was doing the right thing. Hitler was sincere that he was doing the right thing. He actually thought he was making the world better, but he was sincerely wrong. It takes so much more than just being sincere. And in fact, so many people like in Satanists are sincere. People in Mormon polygamist cults are sincere. Lots of people are sincere, but they're sincerely wrong. They're sincerely misguided. They're sincerely off the path. And so you have to be more than sincere. Jesus said, in order to go to heaven, you have to follow the commandments. In order to go to heaven, you have to go through him. The Bible says, and Jesus says, that he is the only way to heaven. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And no one can get to the Father, he said, except through him. So maybe you don't care, Danny, about how people live, you know, and they can live any way they want to as long as they're not killing, killing and murdering. But really, we're not God. And that's the bottom line is we are not God. We don't make the rules. God already did. And he said no adultery. He said no fornication, no sex before marriage, no getting drunk. He has a whole list, long list, and not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament. And I know you hate this, but it doesn't matter because you can block your ears and close your eyes all you want, but it doesn't change the truth. John 3, 5, Jesus said that if you're not born again, baptized, then you're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. John 3, 16 and 17 says, if you believe in Jesus, you can be forgiven and you can be saved. But if you don't believe in Jesus, you're condemned already. Mark 28, 19 says that, well, Jesus sends his apostles out to the ends of the earth and says, go baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and command them to obey all that I have commanded you. And of course, we have uh, Matthew 25, which talks about people who don't live out their faith. They don't do good works and they go to hell because they lived how they wanted and they were selfish and they didn't live the commandments of God. I can name a thousand verses in the Bible where it says you just can't live however you want to. You have to follow God. You have to follow Jesus and you have to follow Jesus the way he wanted. I agree that you have one little part right that we need to love others and love them fiercely and not just judge them and condemn them and yell at them and condemn them, but we also have to love them enough to tell them the truth and to call them to the real Jesus Christ who wants them to get to heaven. So in closing, it does matter what we do. Sin will keep us from heaven. And the most loving thing you can do is to tell somebody that. Because how unloving would it be if you just let people live however they want to live and they all end up in hell burning for all eternity because they've rejected God, they don't care about God, they don't care about living for God. And we didn't tell them and we could have warned them. That's like someone about to drive off a cliff and you have a sign that says, 
no road ahead, and you just feel, yeah, let them do whatever they want. You know, they have their choice. They're probably good people in the car. We don't want to warn them. But that's kind of the mentality that we have. But the most loving thing we can do is call sinners from their ways, help people to know the love of Jesus. Because in order to come close to Jesus, we have to remove sin from our life. Sin literally separates us from God. So when we remove this sin, we can know God all the more clearly. We can know his love. You know, yeah, I have rules in my marriage too. I can't cheat on my wife. I can't beat her. I can't get drunk and lie to her. I can't, you know, all of these other things. But if I love her, I wouldn't want to do all of these things in the first place. And it's not about the rules. But for people who want to break the rules and love living that lifestyle, as Danny admits that she does, well, then you have to justify getting rid of the rules. You have to justify your actions. You have to find a way to be able to live those out without feeling guilty about it. And the only way to do that is just to say, well, God doesn't care. You know, God is not going to care really how you live your life as long as you believe in him. And that's just false. 100% percent false, 100% justification for our own immoral lifestyle, our own actions, and for doing things that we know in our hearts are wrong. There are a thousand other things we could talk about in this video from the Eucharist to her problem with the saints and confessions and things she just rightly doesn't understand. But, you know, I could answer those questions for her. But we just don't have time because this video is already becoming long. So I just want to thank you all for watching today. Please watch this video multiple times if you need to copy down the Bible verses and even things that Jesus said himself. There's so many things that Jesus said that we just didn't have time to talk to that would probably be concerning for her and for her salvation. I mean, if she loves Jesus, the biggest thing she could know is what Jesus actually said, not that he just ate with sinners. He didn't just eat with sinners for fun. He ate with them so that they would get rid of their sin because they were sick and so that they could go to heaven. He wants them to go to heaven, so he was calling them from their sins. And we need to do the same. So thank you all so much for watching today. Please, so much of our country and our culture believes this, has this mentality that's leading people to the wide road to destruction. So we need to warn them. So please share this video with everyone you know. Please, you know, share the message of love with everyone you know. Please like this video. Please put a thumbs up. All these things help to make our videos more popular. And please, if you can, help support our ministry so we can make many more videos like this and help get this word out there to a dead and dying world. A, de a dead and dying world that hasn't give been given answers. People who may be sincere but are sincerely walking the wide road. So please check out our Patreon and our PayPal down below. You can do a uh, one-time donation, yearly, monthly, whatever you want. Um, and also please bring us into your church so we can uh, preach to your confirmation students, your um, RCIA candidates, whatever you want. Info at thecatholictruth.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and our social media below. God bless you.